Hello, welcome back to Talking Europe. Now, in part one of this programme, we spoke to the European astronaut Luca Parmitano as the European Space Agency launches a new recruitment drive for astronauts. If you missed that, you can find it on our website, france24.com. Now, we're continuing our mission into space, so to speak, in this part of the programme. The United States and Russia may have launched the space race, but Europe is very much there. Not just ESA astronauts, but projects like the European Galileo and Copernicus satellites established successes in navigation and Earth observation. Well, the European space industry employs around a quarter of a million people and the continent manufactures a third of the world's satellites. Just before the pandemic struck, there was a funding boost of over 14 billion euros. But now concerns are being raised that Europe risks losing ground because of COVID-19. Well, let's introduce our space-minded political guests. We have with us German MEP Damian Boselager from the Greens Group and Czech MEP Andrei Kovarik from the Centrist Renew Europe Group. Hello to both of you. Hello. Hello and thank you for having me. I'd like to ask a first question very generally about uh, the strategic interest for Europe of being involved in space. Uh, Luca Parmitano, the astronaut, was just telling us about all the scientific exploration and discoveries that are happening. Damien Boselaga, to come to you first. For you, what is the strategic interest of Europe having a strong space industry? Europe is currently facing this dual transition for on the one side being more climate friendly and greening and sustainable economy, and on the other side, really the digitization effort to become a competitive digital continent as well. And I think on both sides, space can really help if we develop the technologies that we need, if we are able to use Earth observation, for example, to um, increase and improve our uh, climate footprint. I mean, they're all ideas of, of uh, increasing really our, uh, our work. And I think space can really help in this effort. Andrei Kovarik, uh, I should mention that you're in Prague, where the European Global Navigation Satellite System has its headquarters, soon to be transformed into the EU Space Programme Agency. Uh, same question to you. Uh, what's the strategic interest for Europe of being involved uh, heavily in space? As you mentioned, indeed, uh, there is um, um, the seat of the, the uh, GSA agency in Prague, but I think it's, it's uh, very important for Europe uh, in, in general to have an ambitious uh, space program. Uh, I have to agree with uh, what uh, Damien had to, had to say uh, about uh, this, this policy. Uh, you mentioned uh, the global ambitions of other partners, and I, th I really think that Europe should not lag, lag behind. And we can see uh, the importance for the space program on the economic uh, conditions, on the economic environment in Europe. And also I think there is an important point uh, to have uh, state-to-art research uh, capabilities in Europe uh, which can actually uh, not only serve for the purposes of the space policy, but uh, in uh, technological spillovers, also in other areas of, mm. uh, of our lives. So mm -hmm. I think uh, there, is a, there is a lot of good points for Europe to have an ambitious space program. And just to explain for our viewers that sort of difference between the European Space Agency, which is a, a non-political body, it's not part of the EU, and the new EU Space Programme and the Space Programme Agency that I, I just mentioned. Uh, now, that is a, an EU initiative that's going to consolidate space-related activities of the EU into a single regulation with a big focus on existing satellites, Earth observation and new security aspects as well. However, uh, there's also the economic side that we need to talk about. Damian Boselaga, uh, I mentioned this in my introduction, uh, concern that the COVID pandemic and the economic crisis in Europe could have a negative impact on the European space industry. You joined a group letter warning European Commissioner Thierry Breton about this. What dangers do you see to the European space industry? You mentioned quite clearly the issues of governance, that there are like different institutions currently still a bit competing about uh, these space efforts. And for us, it was really important in the negotiations of the space program now that we somehow consolidate and that we make steps towards a more cohesive uh, point. And the reason here is also the funding. It's absolutely clear that we need parliamentary scrutiny, but that we need also European funding to uh, take up a large part of the space budget so that it's stable and continues even through times of crisis. I think it's important that uh, we from the European level will ensure that uh, funding will be continued, 
but also that the member states uh, in all their contributions ensure a continuation because in the end for every euro that we invest in space uh, six euros come back in, in terms of economic output so I really do believe that this is a future industry that we should as a European public good invest in together. And Andre Kovarik, uh, being there in Prague, where this uh, space program agency is going to be starting in 2022, I mean, that's already the launch of that has already been pushed back by one year because of the pandemic. Are you concerned that the pandemic is going to damage the, the space industry and its ambitions? The pandemic has uh, very uh, significant impact on, on various uh, sectors of, of economy. And I think the space policy uh, has not been spared. But at the same time, I think uh, the important is to stick to the strategy, to stick to the ambition. Uh, I am not particularly happy about uh, the, the delay, but I think, uh, as we can, we can say in other programs, the space policy needs uh, long-term perspectives, long-term visions, and long-term considerations. The, the key there is stability and predictability. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the current setup, uh, the, the space program, its funding, but also the level of ambition that we have in Europe is actually providing for, for those uh, uh, predictable and st stable conditions. Mm -hmm. So I think the important is to, to stick to them. Obviously, uh, the pandemic may have delays uh, and an impact on, on this, uh, but uh, the key is to stick uh, to, to our plan and mm -hmm. to strategy. Uh, Mr. Kovarik, just to stay with you, um, at the same time, there are, of course, uh, these big public health problems uh, from the pandemic. We're absolutely not out of the health crisis yet. And we're seeing big drops in GDP around the EU, higher unemployment, costs of propping up uh, healthcare systems and economies. Uh, the Czech Republic has been suffering particularly badly uh, on, on the health front recently. For some people who are watching this, space might not feel like it's much of a priority right now. Indeed, uh, currently we are facing uh, one of the worst uh, health crises in definitely in EU history, uh, and and we need to we need to tackle uh, those uh, negative impacts uh, as you as you described them. Uh, at the same time, the pandemic has. Uh, a, a negative impact also and, and pressure on, on, on publicly financed uh, programs. But I think the key here is it's to keep the, the long-term vision and we see the benefits and, and also the profits of the uh, ambitious EU space policy uh, in, in longer term. And if we want to, uh, and this is the ambition also of the European Union, if we want to strengthen the resilience of our economy and if we want to uh, sort of steer the recovery uh, of, of European economies, I think it is important to have also uh, this kind of, let's say, uh, as it was mentioned by, uh, by Damian, the, the multiplication effects of the space policy and the positive effects on, on the economy. So in the longer term, I believe the, the space policy can be part of uh, the successful recovery in Europe. Damian Boselager, you seem to be nodding in agreement with Mr. Kovarik uh, in his answer to that question. Definitely. I mean, currently, to be very frank, the shortage of public funds is not the issue. We have just negotiated a huge recovery program. We know that a lot of governments are currently undergoing um, expensive uh, fiscal policies, so trying to invest money into the economies to kick them, kickstart them out of this uh, crisis and into the recovery again. So I think now is the question more of where do we invest all this public money the best? And uh, as we, I think, both have outlined, there are huge returns on investment when it comes to space investment. And I do believe that it's quite crucial to do these investments now because there is a space race ongoing and I think we can participate well in it uh, if we invest now. And uh, looking at another aspect, uh, Europe has tense diplomatic relations with uh, Russia to a degree with, with China, both uh, actors in, in space. France, for example, has just carried out some virtual space defence and security exercises. Russia launched an anti-satellite missile test uh, in 2020. Uh, Mr Kovarik, are you concerned about space as a potential future battleground? I think there is... Um conscious uh, around the globe, uh, also in Europe, uh, that uh, the space area can uh, become one of the important aspects of uh, military operations, especially when we think about uh, potential threats. Um, 
I would be a little bit hesitant to call it a battleground, uh, to not to uh, describe it as a uh, mm -hmm. Star Wars uh, mm -hmm. episode, but I think what is what is important to to say is that, and and we can see it in strategies from uh, going from NATO to the U.S. as you mentioned, that the space is mm -hmm. a part of our military strategies, and we have to be aware and we have to be able to face mm -hmm. uh, to uh, potential threats mm -hmm. that can be coming mm -hmm. from uh, the space area, mm -hmm. uh, also from mm -hmm. uh, some of the regimes that are mm -hmm. uh, not uh, on the friendly note with us. And uh, just got time for your answer to that same question, Mr. Boselag, uh, how concerned are you about this aspect in space? I mean, there are um, issues that we can see. I mean, uh, the US uh, opened up a new military branch called the Space Force. Um, we also see activities, as my colleague has also said, outside um, where, you know, uh, basically states uh, shoot down their own satellites just to show the military capacity that they have. And I think it's very important that we engage in treaties and uh, try to really ensure that the weaponization and militarization of space is, is stopped instantly. Because at the moment, it's hard to control what is being sent up. And I think uh, if we want to make this part of our critical infrastructure when it comes to Internet and uh, other things, I think it's extremely important that we engage with other states here. Perhaps an angle for us to look at in a future programme. For now, though, I'd like to thank you both very much for taking part in this debate. And thanks to you for watching. You can find all of our programmes on our website, of course. See you soon.